Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. Today we have three stories. The first is about a lady who finally deserved to be banned from Publix. Second, about a Karen who doesn't know what private property is. And a third story about a fat guy who can't tell the difference between an employee and a kid. So let's get started. No, I won't make you a damn sub. Congrats on getting banned from Publix. I used to work in the deli of a Publix down in Florida, which is a fairly large grocery chain in the southeast. The Publix I worked at was fairly close to The Villages, which is the largest retirement community in the country. Probably something in the range of two-thirds of all customers in the store were retirees. There was a larger-than-average number of rude customers, but there were a few regulars who were really foul-tempered. For the year or so that I worked there, a 70-ish year old woman came in every Sunday and ordered the same thing a toasted chicken tender sub with shredded pepper jack cheese. She was also the pushiest B-word I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. If there was a line and she was forced to wait, she'd start yelling that we need to hurry up because some of us have places to be. She would loudly complain that the service here is getting worse every year. She'd lean over the counter and snap her fingers at anyone passing by and snap, excuse me, I've been waiting for service, come here. She also had a habit of whistling at people like they were a dog to get their attention. Everyone hated this woman. She never said thank you, always found something wrong with everything you did. This sub is burned. There isn't enough cheese. I didn't see you wash your hands. I don't want that sub. Go wash your hands and make me a new one. I never even tried to be polite. Unfortunately, Publix has a policy of make it right so we could never tell her to go F herself like we so desperately wanted to. Eventually, I got fed up with every other guest being a miserable old piece of crap, more interested in starting a fight than they were in getting their deli meats, so I quit. Three days after I quit, I came back to Publix, stopped by the deli to give one of my co-workers his phone charger that I'd borrowed. As I turned to leave, that woman stepped out of line and said, Hey, you work here, don't you? Come take my order. I said, Sorry, I quit a few days ago. I don't work here anymore. Her. I just saw you behind the counter talking to someone. If you have time to talk, you have time to help customers. Me. Sorry, can't help you. They'll be with you soon. So I tried to walk away, but she stepped in front of me and grabbed my arm, then pointed her finger in my face and started screaming at me that I was the worst employee she'd ever seen, that I always messed up her order, and that I should feel lucky to have a job, and that I needed to do as she said or she'd tell my manager. I yanked my arm out of her grip, told her to go F herself, then walked over to the customer service counter and told the manager there that there was someone harassing other customers in the deli line. He said he'd heard someone shrieking about something and was about to go see what it was. So he and I walked back over to the deli and I pointed her out to the manager. After a short conversation in which he asked her if anything was wrong, she started complaining to him that I was rude and unwilling to help. He told her that I no longer worked here, she was disturbing other customers and had to leave, and she wouldn't be welcome back. She left complaining that public sucked and she would be calling corporate to file a complaint. And I got a few texts from my old co-workers thanking me for getting rid of her. Glad to help and see you never, yo hag. I don't work for you, Karen, and I won't. I do a lot of work with lumber and sell the finished products to a select few clients, mostly smaller stores. This puts me into shops and markets fairly often, around three or four times a month, usually delivering the goods or picking up the trade-in stock slash parts, depending on the arrangements. That said, I just got home from a drop-off and pickup routine, having scored a solid win with what I'll admit was a subpar, retooled, handicap-friendly working desk and cabinet pairing. In exchange, I got my hot little hands on ridiculously underpriced black walnut I have plans for, meaning I'm having an awesome day. Cue the arrival of the Wonder Twins at my workshop door, pounding loud enough that I can hear it over my music. My shop, my rules, my pick of the tunes. I walk to the door dressed in my flannel finery and fresh sawdust, not happy with anyone but the select few people who know not to knock if they could hear me playing music. I don't do walk-in customers or allow visitors inside the shop. Karen, did you or did you not build my husband a set of pantry shelves last week? Me. Probably. I know that I definitely delivered some to a seller. Yes, last month, two days before Thanksgiving. Karen, whatever. We demand a refund. Take them out immediately. Me. No, I don't do installation or removal. That's a not me department issue. You can leave now. Karen tried to jostle past me to get into the working area of my shop. Me. Okay, this is a language barrier issue. See yourself out and don't come back, like ever. 
nobody's going to be allowed inside of the shop. Karen, I demand a refund and I'll be getting my refund immediately. I'll call the police. Me, have at it, cowgirl. I'll be pressing charges for what it's worth. I don't know you. Karen dials her phone, ranting and raving. I lock up the shop and monitor her for the duration. Karen, smugly, you're going to get arrested, you sanctimonious P-word. Me, um, sure, I'll be over here smoking a cigarette. Karen, I forbid you to smoke. Yeah, not going to happen. My property, my smoking rules, kick sand, lady, I'm thinking. I smoke, she fumes, the police arrive and park in my driveway. This doesn't bother me as I could give a rat's tukus what my neighbors think. Karen, arrest this man for fraud and assault. He threatened me. Me, pointing to the cameras installed on my shop exterior, shrugging. Cue the cops nodding to what she's ranting about, me retrieving the laptop from the dining room table and bringing it out to them. Me. So, uh, to help clear up some confusion, I can show you guys the video. Cops. Yes, please. Step over there, please. I oblige. They review the video. Karen suddenly changes the narrative. I'm her employee. Her husband is on his way to prove it. I stole stuff. Um, what? I ask what it is that I purportedly stole for a description. None available. She's demanding access to the shop, saying she definitely saw it earlier in the day, definitely close to her lunch break. Double what? I tell the cops to scroll back to around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, then she's changing the timeline to yesterday. Again, I ask for a specific time of day. Another change of narrative. Now I've stolen cash from her. Yeah, my patience died with that one. Me. If she can't get or keep her story straight, allow me to do so with mine. I don't know her, her husband, or their many problems. I do know that she's trying to get into my shop and I'll be pressing charges for the attempts, plus trespassing and being a expletive deleted, not my finest moment. Cops scribble their notes, take our names and details, escort her from the property, and remind her to not make it difficult on herself by returning. They make a reasonable request that nobody presses charges, which is cool with me. Karen required further discussion on the topic and similarly obliges. I close up the shop for the night, sit on my front porch, and wait. Doesn't take long before her husband shows up, not demanding a damn thing, just issuing well-worn apologies for his wife's behavior. We shake hands, share a few laughs, and I do indicate that I have no interest in being a part of any future direct transactions with him. I do point out where he can get more of my finished product if he's so inclined, and off he goes to a place that I do not envy. I fired the client who gave out my address to Karen, and I stated that I would not be able to fulfill any future business with them. I don't mind the loss, and I can probably get a better gig if I wait for it. Suffice to say, it's not been a good day so far, on the average. He was wearing headphones. Sir, he has autism. All names and some details have been changed to protect the innocent. Last night, Oscar and I were talking about the incident I had with a Karen at a local store last year, and now his former co-worker, Lila, saved me before the situation got worse. He had his own story to share and has granted me permission to post it here. Cast, Oscar, manager. Joseph, helpful guest stocking shelves. Penny, Joseph's mom. George, jerk butt customer. Back before he joined the company we both work for now, Oscar was doing his rounds around the department store he worked at, talking to customers and employees and making sure everything was running smoothly. It was slower than usual, so Oscar was able to enjoy his stroll. He came upon a teenaged guest reorganizing the stuffed animals and making everything look neat under the supervision of his mom. Oscar noticed the guest was wearing noise-canceling headphones. Oscar, thank you so much for making everything look neat. You've got an eye for detail. Penny, a bit embarrassed. He likes to organize and clean up as it helps calm him when he gets overstimulated. I can get him to stop if it's a problem. Oscar, nodding. My son does the same thing, and as long as it helps him, then you're more than welcome to. Then to Joseph, you're doing a great job. He left. Oscar decided to get some paperwork done when they heard a loud clattering and a cry. Oscar ran back to see this huge man who looked like he'd eaten one Thanksgiving dinner too many and his button-up shirt was about ready to bust open, standing over Joseph. Joseph had his hands over his ears, now sans headphones, and was looking like a proverbial deer in the headlights. The guest was pointing at him. George, now that you aren't listening to your music, are you going to help me? Penny walked up to him. Penny, sir, this is my son. He's not an employee and he has autism. George, looking at Penny with narrowed eyes. Don't lie, he was wearing headphones. Realizing the situation needed to be de-escalated, Oscar walked up, 
Customer service smile on his face, although he was seething on the inside. Oscar, may I help you, sir? George notices Oscar. Thank God you're here. You really need to tell your employees here, pointing at Joseph and Penny, to not wear headphones on the job and stop covering for each other. I can't believe that you hire, insert seven-letter insult that begins with an R and ends with an S and is considered the best way to get your butt kicked at least six ways to Sunday in all 50 states. Now, the important thing to know about Oscar is this. While he's a kind man who will give you the last dollar in his pocket if you needed it, he really doesn't take kindly to someone being treated badly, especially if it's a person with disabilities as his younger son has autism. Oscar, looking the customer down with a dad glare. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to watch your language and your actions. I can verify that these are a pair of guests and that he was rearranging the shelves because he wanted to. And even if they did work here, that doesn't give you the right to harass them. Just then a security guard walked over, apparently attracted by the commotion. George went from tomato red to bed sheet white. Oscar turned back to Penny. Oscar, if you want to press charges, we can help you with that. Penny, crying at this point. No, I think it'd just be best if we left. Oscar, okay, if you think that's best. George, now realizing that this would be the best time to leave, walked away. Oscar picked up the headphones and returned them to Joseph. Penny hugged Joseph. Penny, thank you, sir. Oscar, you're welcome. I apologize that you had to endure that. Is there anything I can do to make the situation better? Penny, no, but we greatly appreciate it. Oscar, I'll let the staff know to watch out for that man, and if there's any problems, don't hesitate to contact us. George never stepped into the store again. From then on, Joseph and Penny would come into the department store to say hello and organize the shelves every Monday, with Oscar occasionally bringing out some extra toys for Joseph to put away if he wanted. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's stories, and we'll see you soon.